Hi, I'm Russ of Aquarium X Pets. Many people think of isopods strictly as members of a bioactive cleanup crew, but in today's video, we'll talk about six isopod species that are great for display. In my opinion, in order to qualify as an excellent display isopod species, one needs to be active and visible much of the time, and preferably have something unique or interesting about its appearance, whether that is color, pattern, size, or some combination of the three. Before we get into species though, I want to talk about two additional factors that will greatly influence whether isopods are good display animals or not. One reason that a clear-sighted enclosure is better for display is that you're more likely to put it in a place where you can look into it without having to disturb it. When you lift up the lid of an enclosure, isopods, disturbed by the movement itself, or maybe by the sudden difference in light intensity, will tend to run and hide. But if that clear-sighted enclosure is left undisturbed, many isopods will go about their business even if the light in the room is relatively bright. I didn't quite realize how day active some species of isopods were until I began to keep some of them in clear acrylic enclosures. For some of the shyer species like rubber duckies, to be honest, it hasn't made much of a difference in how much I see them, except maybe at night. But with some of the species I'll mention later in this video, the difference has been amazing. Another factor that will influence the display potential of an enclosure of isopods is the population density. In my video on new isopod cultures, which you can check out here, I explain how a new colony with relatively low numbers of isopods is very different from an established colony in many ways. One of those ways is visibility. Isopods in sparsely populated cultures tend to hide a lot more than in cultures with a booming population. There are probably various reasons for this. The isopods in a larger culture probably need to forage more as there's more competition for food. Moreover, with a higher population of isopods, the probability of seeing larger numbers of isopods is inevitably going to increase. Just a numbers game. Not only that, but we know that isopods emit aggregating pheromones, basically chemical signals that encourage them to hang out together. So isopods in the company of large numbers of other isopods may even benefit from an instinctive sense of security due to those pheromones and or other factors. So in short, you'll get a much better display in an enclosure with clear sides that doesn't have to be disturbed to be observed and that has robust numbers of isopods in it. So now let's talk about my picks for great display species. Number one is Porcella levis dairy cow or milkback. I'm going to talk about these two morphs together, partly because they're the same species and partly because they're quite different behaviorally from any other morph that is considered to be Porcella levis. These two are definitely more bold than my P. levis orange and my P. levis california mix. They tend to be quite day active, especially at feeding time, and have a feeding response that rivals that of any other isopod species. As long as they're hungry, and they nearly always are, they will voraciously swarm food in an impressively short time, and will do so happily, even in relatively bright light. They both breed prolifically, maybe even too prolifically, and they're both visually appealing morphs too. Most dairy cows have a really strong pied expression, with a great balance of dark and light markings. Some milkbacks look a lot like dairy cows, but the best representatives of the morph have a pale milky patch in the center of the carapace with a darker ring surrounding it. If you're considering either of these two P. Levis morphs as display isopods, you may want to check out my species profile video on P. Levis before you make a decision. Isopod species number two is Armadillidium maculatum. The zebra pill bug is another species that doesn't seem to mind ambling around the enclosure during the day. One of the reasons for this may be that it is thought to be the mimic of a pill millipede that can protect itself by emitting a noxious fluid. If that is indeed the case, then the zebra pill bug is probably not bothered all that much by predators in the wild and may feel little need to hide. This species is extremely attractive, whether it's the striped morph, the spotted morph, the yellow morph, or any of the others. While not quite as prolific as the dairy cow, it's a fairly prolific species, and if you start out with zebras, you should find yourself with a bustling herd before too long. If you want more information on the zebra pill bug, I have a whole playlist of species-specific care guides, and every species mentioned in this video is featured in it. So after you watch this video, feel free to check that playlist out. Before I move on to the other species on the playlist, allow me to thank my patrons at Patreon. 
If you haven't checked out Patreon.com yet, it's a great way for you to support creators on YouTube and other platforms, and we creators like to do what we can to show our gratitude. For example, before my live streams, I post the topic in advance on Patreon to give patrons a chance to send me questions, and I make sure to address those questions during the live streams. If you'd like to help support Aquarimax Pets through Patreon, please check out the link at the end of the video or in the description. And now, on to display isopod species number three, Porcelia ornatus yellow dot, also known as gold dot and south, and I think there are some other names in use as well. This is a fairly large species of isopod, and it seems to be the least shy and most prolific of the Porcelia ornatus localities that I've kept. It is one of the species that I featured in my video on hand feeding isopods. Though they may not be the flashiest isopod out there, the yellow dots on the rear part of the perion and on the pleon add a nice splash of color, and their large size and bold nature makes them great display isopods. Isopod species 4 may surprise you a little bit. Armadillidium vulgare, the common pill bug. Now, it may be one of the most common isopods, but it really has a lot going for it. It has so many morphs, and some of them seem to be particularly bold. Armadillidium vulgare magic potion, the American line, is often said to be among the boldest morphs of this species. It's also one of the largest, if not the largest, and in the opinion of many, one of the most attractive. Even if magic potions aren't your thing, there are many other morphs of this species, and once the population density in your enclosure is high enough, you'll see them all the time. Display isopod number five is Porcelionides prenosus. Though this isopod is smaller in stature than all of the other species on this list, it makes up for it in several ways. For one, it's easily one of the boldest isopods I've ever kept. They're constantly on the move and in the open. It's also a relatively fast-moving species and quite prolific. What's more, it comes in various colors and patterns. One of my favorite isopod display enclosures to look at is my P. Perinosis party mix. In that enclosure, I have blues, oranges, whiteouts, Oreo crumbles, orange creams, caramels, and a few interesting looking individuals that don't seem to belong to any of those morphs. As for the feeding response of this species, it's right up there with dairy cows, an absolute joy to watch. Before I list species number six, I wanted to let you know to stick around for a couple of honorable mentions. Without further ado, species number six is Armadillidium gestroi. I cannot say enough about this fantastic display isopod. It gets quite large and robust for an Armadillidium species, and has a bold pattern with incredibly bright colors. Like the zebra pill bug, a gestroi probably mimics pill millipedes from the genus Glomerus, which may account for its incredibly bold nature. These little technicolor tanks are out and about all the time, not a bit shy, and they boast a hearty appetite. They're all over the food right after I put it in, and will graze on it for hours. They take a while to grow to a size at which they'll reproduce, but they do produce in decent numbers once they reach that size. There's even a beautiful morph, which appears to be azanthic, called zingers. Brandy from Ractastic Rax sent me a starter colony of these a few months ago, which recently began to produce babies. It would be a challenge for me to pick a favorite isopod, but this has got to be my favorite in the genus Armadillidium. There are a lot of other isopods that I could have included on this list, and I wanted to share a couple of honorable mentions with you. One is Porcelio Hoffman's egg eye black. In my experience, it seems to be a little more bold than the nominate form of Porcelio Hoffman's egg eye, and with its impressive size and rich dark coloration, it's fascinating to watch. I have my colony in an acrylic display enclosure, and there are nearly always some out and about, especially at feeding time. Another honorable mention goes to Porcelio scaber. This species will hide a fair bit until it becomes well established, but once it does, a good number of specimens will tend to be out in the open, and when food is offered, they'll swarm it pretty enthusiastically. This species has so many color and pattern morphs that there's bound to be one or more types that appeal to you. As I said before, I could easily have included a number of other isopod species on this list. Let me know in the comments which other isopods, in your opinion, deserve a place among the top isopod species for display enclosures. And thanks for watching. I post videos every Friday with live streams on Wednesdays with lots of isopod content. Please feel free to share, like, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell and choose notifications all so you don't miss my next video.